depending on who you talk to, you'll find there's plenty of voices out there commenting that the humble Commodore 64 can't do a 3D racing game to save its life. Which is a view forward by looking at some terrible conversions of some high profile arcade classics. Though, if you go beyond these big names, seeking out smaller ones, you'll find plenty of them which show there's more than meets the eye. And that's just what this video is about. One in which I'm going to showcase what I think are some of the more interesting racing games for the Commodore 64, specifically those with a 3D or vanishing point style view and focused more on pure racing excitement. So now it's time to take it to the track. This is Beyond the Scanlines, a series focusing on interesting games on classic computing and gaming platforms. The first pick is Buggy Boy, a least conversion of Tatsumi Electronics' 1986 arcade hit. It's all about racing for the goal here, evading obstacles and collecting the multitude of flags for points. Whilst the arcade machine featured some giant sprites on screen, and many of the other conversions did as well, the choice to go with smaller ones here really helps with keeping the action smooth, but also making it a far more responsive game, at least compared to Elite's other conversions. It may not be about racing for position, but Buggy Boy offers a rollicking fun time as you work your way through the courses, trying to not only make your way to the end, but to earn as many points as possible whilst you do. The tech-developed adaptation of Taito's Continental Circus is up next, taking us from off-road hijinks to the glamour of the F1 circuit. This game has you racing across several circuits with the goal being to qualify for the next by overtaking enough rivals to put you high enough in the field. The racing here is as pure as it gets, with the challenge coming from some tight time limits to beat, alongside the ever-present hazards caused by your rivals. Hitting them once will require you to pit to repair the damage. Collide with them again, and your car will explode. It's not the prettiest racer out of the games covered here, with its chunky car sprites and scenery, but this is all in service of the speed especially coming with the undulations offered by the circuits. It's not all about racing a flat course here. It may not be your regular Formula One racer, but this one is still quite a solid conversion in its own right. Calling the Commodore 64 versions of the original Crazy Cars and its follow-up a pair of disasters is not really harsh enough to truly sell just how terrible they are. Thankfully, it's a whole other story with this third instalment. Crazy Cars 3 has you racing in a series of street races aiming to reach the end ahead of your rivals. As you move up into divisions, the races get more challenging and you'll need to use your winnings to both repair and upgrade your car, along with putting some aside as a wager against your rivals to pocket a bit of extra cash to go alongside your winnings. One interesting quirk is the choice of interlaced visuals here. It results in the UI screens looking a little odd if you're playing them on a modern screen or an emulator. Though of course, if you're playing it on a real CRT display, you'll find it offers a little extra detail as a result. Once again, the racing here is fluid and the controls are quite responsive as well. This is one of those games where you'll want to play the disc version if possible as in order to reduce the amount of time spent watching the tape load, a large number of features were removed from the tape version of the game. Features which are really what make this one stand out from the crowd. We're back to the Formula One Circus with Grand Prix Circuit, developed by Distinctive Software and published by Accolade. As you'd expect with Distinctive at the helm, it's very much built upon the foundations of Test Drive. Though here, you're racing across a series of Formula One circuits, pretty much as you'd expect. When starting out, you can select to play a single course or play in a championship. Then your car, before taking to the track and racing the qualifying lap to set your position on the grid. With that out of the way, the race starts for real. It's not quite as extensive a simulation as, say, Ferrari Formula 1. The Grand Prix circuit is a far more forgiving experience, with its engine offering a faster update rate and a solid driving model which sets you up for some tricky racing. 
especially as you turn up the difficulty, as this introduces both damage and a greater risk of crashing out if you're not careful when taking corners. It's also worth giving an honourable mention to The Cycles, a later racing game which takes the mechanics from this and replaces the Formula 1 cars with 500cc motorcycles. If I were going to hand out an award to the game featuring the longest title featured in this video, it certainly would have to go to Activision's The Great American Cross Country Road Race, picking one of four races you'll be aiming to race across the US as fast as you can. You'll plot your course out on a map between stages. Many of these offer a clear route to deal with, though some will include obstacles you'll have to avoid. What also plays a factor in completing each stage is the time of day. Depending on what time it is, you'll encounter varying amounts of traffic, but also reduced visibility when at night. It may veer on the more simplistic side of the visual scale, but once again, it means the driving is fast and responsive. And you'll see this especially as you push your car closer and closer to its top speed. And that's something you'll need to do, especially once your police radar goes off. And speeding up to outrun them tends to be a little more effective than slowing down to get below the legal speed limit. It may have started out as an attempt to bring Atari 2600 Classic Enduro to more powerful machines, but this turns out to be a great, great racer in its own right. I'm probably alone in thinking this, but I generally don't mind the Commodore 64 conversion of Outrun. It's a far better one than the others which were published by US Gold, and whilst the removal of the end of stage forks means it loses one of its unique mechanics, but it carries the pace of the arcade quite well, even if it's a little bit ugly. As with other releases of the time, it would be adapted and tweaked when brought over to the USA, and with the heavy take-up of the trusty 1541 over there, plenty of changes were made which took serious advantage of the disc format to improve the presentation. From being able to select your route when starting a new game, to the animated map shown on Game Over plotting what route you took, these all go a long way to bringing the presentation much closer to the arcade original. It also has some tweaked visuals on offer, mainly around your player sprite, but also using raster splits on all the stages, not just a subset of them as in the UK release. It's still not the most visually exciting racer, but I've always felt it has it where it counts, both in the pace of the driving and the responsiveness of the controls. And I don't know about you, but for me, that's really the most important part here. The only head-to-head -head racer included in this roundup, Epix's Pit Stop 2, takes the core mechanics of its predecessor and introduces the ability to compete against a friend or an AI rival. Once again, it's back to the Formula 1 circus to put the pedal to the metal and take the checkered flag. But the challenge this time is really around managing the damage your tyres accumulate, alongside the state of your fuel supply. When either of these becomes critical, it's time to take a pit stop. Here, you'll take charge of the pit crew to both refuel your car and swap out the tyres, aiming to be done and back on the track as fast as possible, lest your opponent sneaks out in front whilst you are busy. Despite being probably the earliest game featured in this list, it's very visually impressive with plenty of colour on screen, including some large sprites for the cars as well. The split screen does mean there's little room for trackside obstacles though, but in its own way, there is plenty of challenge on offer, especially if you choose to run the full championship across all six courses included. Conversions of arcade racing games are certainly popular, aren't they? At least in this list. So while you may expect a conversion of one of Sega's Superscalar arcade games to turn out to be a bit rough or a disaster on the C64, in the hands of Chris Butler, Power Drift is anything but. Picking one of the five races on offer, your goal is to race to the end, 
by trying to place in the first three places over each of the five tracks. Power Drift is all about its courses here. You're not just racing on the ground here, as the courses put you high into the sky as well, making things seriously perilous at times. The way in which the speed is kept up here does make things look a little chunky at points, particularly the trackside scenery. But the speed is ever so important to maintain a sense of fluidity, and that is certainly the case here. It's a great challenge, and one which certainly shows that in the right hands, the Commodore 64 is more than capable of delivering a great facsimile of the kinds of experiences you'd expect from the arcade. The simulation side of the driving game fence offers plenty of great races, and one of the first serious ones was Jeff Crabbard's Revs, and its enhanced upgrade Revs Plus. Taking the chequered flag in this Formula 3 simulation isn't easy, and whilst it may not be quite as snappy as its original BBC Micro 4 Bear, the racing action still offers plenty of thrills and spills. The lack of trackside scenery, outside of those markers indicating upcoming turns, might make things look bland at a glance. But this isn't a glancing at pretty scenery simulation. This is a racing simulation. What's more impressive here is the scale of your rivals. In many games, the challenge they pose is reduced by their on-screen size. But here, they can be quite imposing up close as you're closing in ready to overtake them. Revs is a game which is not for the faint of heart, but if you're willing to invest the time to learn how to drive these Formula 3 beasts, you'll be in for an exhilarating experience for sure. Another oldie is up next, with digital integration Speed King. Speed King marks a shift from four wheels onto two as you race to take the chequered flag across a series of well-known courses. The first thing, which is quite striking for this game, is the number of opponents you're up against. There's 19 rivals you'll need to make your way around to take the lead. And getting past them is not that easy. That is for sure. As you claw your way up through the pack, you'll see quite a number of them on screen at once. And it's certainly impressive at just how well the pace is kept up during these more frantic times. Especially the control responsiveness. Though, this is helped by the more simplistic visuals on display, much like Continental Circus in that regard. So whilst it might look simple to the eye, Speed Kick is a racer which is quite thrilling to play in its own right. It's got that balance laid perfectly between being a pure arcade racer, but also offering some simulation elements. And that is something which certainly makes it stand out in the crowd for sure. Many of the games I've showcased thus far in this video have all really relied on the vanishing point style of trickery to give the illusion of 3D. But of course, I don't think a list of driving games for the Commodore 64 which can show that 3D effects can be done really is complete without Jeff Crammond's Stunt Car Racer. You all know the deal here. You take the wheel of a hotted up racer as you race your way around treacherous courses situated high off the ground. Mastery of them really requires you to know just how to manage your speed and your limited supply of boost. And failure, of course, leads you to crash, rather spectacularly, into the ground. The polygonal 3D visuals are a true marvel here, offering clarity and solid performance. In fact, without them, Stunt Car Racer would in fact be a bust. It's truly a technological marvel for what the humble Commodore 64 can do when given plenty of love and proper treatment at the hands of an expert. The final selection for this video is Epix's Super Cycle, which once again offers more arcade style thrills as we go back to two wheels. You'll be racing through a series of courses up against the clock with the aim being to get to the end before you run out of time. Along the way, you'll be facing obstacles of various types starting out with other riders, but you'll also need to negotiate your way around traffic cones, potholes, puddles, and yes, even signage. And all of these will knock you off your bike, wasting precious, precious time to get 
back up to speed. Much like with Pit Stop 2, the visuals here are quite colourful, and they're using the palette incredibly well. This, combined with the overall speed the game plays at, it truly makes an experience which channels that feeling you get from arcade titles like Hang On, and it does it rather well for the trusty Commodore 64. On top of that though, it's one which could bring quite a smile to a player's face, especially with its encouraging messages as you reach its final stages. It, it could be jolly lovely for a game to be like this, as many games tend to be more antagonistic to the player, and it's something which makes you feel really good, especially with how things are right now as I'm recording this. There we have it, a good series of racing games for the Commodore 64, both arcade style experiences and some serious simulations which truly show the breadwin can pull off some great 3D titles. As usual, following the more conventional opinion out there does tend to result in folk missing out on some of the lesser known gems which have been released. And while this video does feature some big names like Stunt Car Racer, there are plenty of others which don't really get that recognition which they deserve. Games like Super Cycle and The Great American Cross Country Road Race are great examples of this. Both of these games are thrilling fun experiences which in their own ways are much more interesting to both play and also talk about than the more widely known conversions which do get a bit more coverage out there and aren't really worth the time. Of course, I'm sure that I've missed a favourite or two when compiling this video, so if there are any that you think do deserve to be amongst those I've highlighted, then why not let me know in the comments? And if you've enjoyed the video, why not click the thumbs up and tell your friends? It helps out in so, so many ways. If you've not already, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if you're after a fix of seeing some of the more underrated and underappreciated games from the days of yore. But most importantly, thank you all so very much for your time in taking another journey beyond the scan lines. <laughs>